Hello, I'm Richard Van Wyke, founder of EV4U Custom Conversions. I'd like to introduce to you a new series of videos featuring this 1974 Carmen Ghia. This series will go through the entire process of converting a gasoline car to electric. We will show you all the steps involved, the uh, thought process, the entire uh, aspect of the conversion. You're not going to see my mug too much because that's not very entertaining, but we will show you some good uh, footage of a conversion in process. Um, this car is going to feature lithium iron phosphate batteries, 4400 amp hour cells. Um, we're going to use a 500 amp Curtis controller and uh, this car will be freeway capable, feature a 40 to 60 mile range, and, uh, and outperform the stock gasoline version. So we'll give you a few insights uh, before we start. I'll show you what, uh, what the car has to offer itself uh, as far as space and so forth, show you what uh, the uh, motor and controller and so forth will look like in the rear. Uh, using uh, our uh, marketing vehicle, Bob, and uh, we can show you the installation of a uh, lithium iron ion pack uh, in this vehicle next to me. So let's uh, let's check them out. Okay, once again, this is a 1974 Volkswagen Carmen Ghia. Uh, for several years, it was the most imported car into the U.S. It was last uh, produced in 1974. And this is the last model year. And uh, this one's in pretty good shape. It came from Las Vegas, Nevada. It's a rust-free car. And uh, the body's very straight, never been in a collision. So let's take a look at uh, where the batteries will go. In the back seat here or where there was a back seat. The previous owner removed the back seat. There's just a shelf here. And there's an area back in there in the shadow that uh, is about enough room for our batteries. Uh, they shouldn't protrude out from that area much at all. And so they will be contained in there and uh, basically concealed. We'll put them on a rack that will allow them to come out for easy inspection and so forth. Here's the stock engine compartment or somewhat stock. This has a um, modified engine in it. This is a 2050 stroker motor. Thing goes pretty good. It's loud and of course uh, like all Volkswagens it drips a little bit of oil and uh, requires valve adjustments and so forth. But uh, we'll show you what that'll look like when completed in a moment. Um, because the batteries will be uh, in the back seat area or behind the back seat, that leaves the, uh, the front under the bonnet, as the Europeans say, free for, um, for luggage. We'll actually remove the fuel tank and uh, that will give us additional room as the fuel tank is raised above the floor there of the uh, luggage area. And there's some depth there that we'll use for installing the uh, um, charger and a few other items. So we'll walk next door and take a look at what the uh, converted uh, engine compartment will look like. Okay, here's a 1974 VW Beetle. This is our marketing vehicle. And uh, give you an idea of what the uh, will look like when it's converted. Very clean, simple installation. You can see the uh, Curtis controller, the Impulse 9 motor. The um, Impulse 9 is used 
because it has almost the exact same specs as the Warp 9. Biggest difference is it's a little bit shorter. Same diameter, but that length is important because it allows us to clear the uh, sheet metal here. Going with the Warp 9, guys have to notch the sheet metal. Don't care to notch sheet metal on a classic car. So anyway, that's what the Carmen Ghia will look like, basically. A little different design, uh, shape of the um, engine bay, but the uh, conversion will basically be about the same. I mean, uh, the heat sink and, and so forth. Um, we will have a, a blower motor for the electric motor for cooling, as the Carmen Ghia doesn't have the same airflow and... Uh, so we'll take care of that. We'll have the enclosed engine compartment as this has. You can't see the ground. Uh, don't have to worry about any debris or water or anything else getting in your engine compartment. So let's go take a look at some uh, lithium batteries. Okay. This is what will be used in the uh, Carmen Ghia conversion. They're a GBS 100 amp per hour cell. There will be 44 of them used. And uh, this vehicle that they are in is a uh, Porsche 924. It has a uh, 40 to 60 mile range. It's heavier than the Carmen Ghia will be when completed. The Carmen Ghia will be about 2,200 pounds. The Porsche is 2,630. So we'll have a lighter vehicle and uh, it's it's Carmen Ghia is a fairly aerodynamic not quite as aerodynamic as the Porsche is here this guy has added a few uh, features uh, so it'll be a little more aerodynamic but um, just recently drove this Porsche on, on hilly terrain at 65 miles an hour for 40 miles. Still had 50% uh, uh, capacity, but of course we're not going to use all that, so the range wouldn't be double that. Pull one of the covers off to show you the uh, energy management system here. So that'll come in. Yeah, the sails are quite rugged. This customer actually ran his completely dead, not just with uh, with driving it, but leaving everything on. We inspected the vehicle before bringing it back to our shop. The cell voltage was down to 0.7 volts. We have since um, charged them, bottom balanced them, so forth, and uh, have been doing road tests. And they seem to have been quite resilient. This is an example of what the screen looks like on the EMS display. This is by Elite Power Solutions, Phoenix, Arizona. Anyway, the Carmen Ghia will feature the same uh, system. Only the Carmen Ghia will be restored after it's converted to the same or better condition than the uh, than our Beetle is. So anyway, this is. Uh, the start of a series of videos. Um, hope you'll stay tuned and and, and uh, watch as we take this from uh, from start to finish. We'll discuss um, you know uh, battery placement, why we've decided to put them where we're putting them, uh, weight distribution, center of gravity, um, all the considerations to make sure that we maintain 
the handling and uh, safety of the vehicle. So we hope you uh, enjoy the videos and learn something from them. Um, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.